So if you were to, this seems like it's maybe just a, a more accurate and concise way uh, as opposed to creating um, a type alias for both like preview article and full article where you would have to repeat stuff like, the, you know, you'd have the same representation in two different type aliases. Yeah, right. So, so, right. So, another way you could do this is you could make two completely different types. Uh, you don't even have to necessarily do type alias. You could just say, I'm going to have type full article, type preview article, and just keep them completely separate. Um, the assumption here is that we have some significant chunk of this that we want to reuse in both contexts because it's always going to be the same. Um, and in particular, if, you want, if you're dealing with decoders on these things, um, you know that if one changes, the other one's going to change because the server format's going to change. Like if you know the server is going to be maintaining the same between both. Um, but it is a, a good point to make that uh, quite often, and, and we'll, we'll come back to this in a future section, um, things look uh, similar but are not quite the same and, and actually uh, it can be a better choice to actually duplicate them and make them completely separate than to, to try and reuse when it doesn't actually make sense. The, the really important point to make here um, is that any, any situation where you find yourself saying I'm going to use an open record for parameters or I'm going to use an open record for, um, uh, for, for data modeling, there is always an alternative. Like if you're doing it for parameters, you can just take a closed record if you want to give it named arguments, or you could use an opaque type or even just a custom type um, to maybe disambiguate in a different way. And that will definitely work. Also, if you're using it for data modeling, you could also use it this way, just use a uh, custom type instead, and that will definitely work as well. And in fact, this is more flexible. Using it with a, an extra type parameter um, gives you the flexibility to make extra info have whatever type you want, not just a record. The reason I mention this is that I think uh, the, the future of open records as a concept in Elm has been recently called into question because it looks like there's a downside when it comes to compiling to WebAssembly in terms of how well we can optimize um, what we're co compiling to. So it would be really great if we knew that every record had a consistent shape and we could say, uh, I'm going to lay out in memory exactly where these bits are and I can say field access means go to this offset in memory. Field access for this means go to this offset in memory. If you have open records, then potentially the, a function that takes an open record can no longer compile to just one implementation that says always go to this offset in memory because depending on what records it accepts, it could potentially need to go to different offsets in memory. Um, so that's a downside that means that maybe this isn't actually the right solution for you know, the Elm's record syntax and maybe there's some other way that it ought to work um, and, and maybe remove open records at least as they exist today um, as a concept from the language. Now, I'm not saying that will or will not happen. Nobody really knows if that's going to happen or not, but I want to raise it as a red flag to say, like, these unintended uses of open records um, are not guaranteed to be supported long term. And in fact, there's already at least one reason why they might not be. So I'd encourage you, you know, when writing your code, to reach for these other things first. Um, there's always an alternative anytime you're using an open record for something. Um, and I, I would tend to prefer those things because their future is, is a lot more secure than the, <laughs> than the future of open records, at least the way they're currently implemented. Okay, so uh, to recap, we talked to start off talking about constraint unification and how Elm's type checker goes from uh, going to, from uh, one type to another possibly more specific type and possibly to a type mismatch. We talked about the differences between open and closed records. We talked about the reason that open records exist. And finally, we talked about how to make extensible custom types uh, as an alternative data modeling solution to using open records.